There is, of these six here, every character that functions in some unique way, and characters that work well together when you add new cards into their decks, determining what team you have. <laughs> Pocket Paragons by Solus Game Studio is a two-player combat card-driven game in which you'll be choosing between three different sets where you can play either a combat mode where you're playing a singular type or a tournament mode where you play up to three times with three unique characters. There's going to be IPs like Aegis as well as the unique IP for the game, Pocket Paragons, and the way it's going to work is pretty simple. You'll be selecting characters, they're going to get their own unique set, set of cards for their hand, as well as an ultimate ability. And the players are going to basically be playing cards face down against each other, flipping them up, determining if they counter one another, how much damage they deal to one another, and then attempting to get their health points of their enemies down to zero. If you can do that, you'll win the round, which could be the game, or in tournament mode, that's one of three you need to win. And then, if you are playing tournament mode, you can actually customize the next deck of your next character by switching in same or like cards with each other, excluding the ultimate and going at it once again. And you continue playing this game for as many times as you'd like. It has a little bit of like a rock, paper, scissors element, but just at its very base core with a ton of unique little strategies, the way to increase your energy level to get yourself to the ultimate that you can be using and then unleashing that power onto your enemy. Each character plays differently and has its own unique abilities and cards while still having all of the same type of cards to use against countering one another. The game plays rather quickly, and you can play over a plethora of rounds. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what sets I have, or at least what parts of sets I have, and then you can decide for yourself whether you want to pick this game up when we talk about it in my review. So here we have Pocket Paragons, and I have actually three of two different base sets of six. I have the Aegis set over here, and then I have the base game. So you'll be getting in one box six of these guys and another six of these guys here. And as you can see, I have Mr. F the Awakened, Christina the Sommelier, Zane the Ender, Etwal XL100, Stell Soul100, and Poppet L000. And how it's going to work, and I'll just explain to you the base idea of the game, maybe we'll even do a couple rounds here, is you're going to be selecting one of these guys or three of these guys in the tournament mode. And you're then going to go ahead and take the character card and the ultimate and put them next to each other. So let's go ahead and just show you how a single game is going to work. I'll go ahead and move these guys over. We won't need them for now. And we're just going to go ahead and play with Mr. F. And we're going to play with Poppet here. Callie will be Poppet. And I will go ahead and be Mr. F. So let's go ahead and organize these just like this and that. And then I'll go ahead and place mine here. Make sure your ultimate is out. In the game, you're going to be getting 10 health to start with. And then you're going to also be getting zero energy. And as you counter or as you are able to rest, you will gain one energy, which can trigger your ultimate. My ultimate says that three energy, I'm able to utilize my boost of all of my cards. And for her, she'll take this into her hand and then she can use it to block all damage dealt to herself when she plays it. Whenever you play an ultimate though, all of your energy gets reset to zero. And each character has their own unique passive abilities. In our hands, we're going to have six cards and we're gonna each have these six different types of cards. So you'll see the rest, you're gonna see the shield here. You'll see the different fire and green, uh, earth and ice, and then of course the fight, or I guess maybe even rock. And we're going to simply go ahead and decide which card we wanna play. And every card can be countered in, in their own unique way. So I'm going to go ahead and play this one here face down, and she'll go ahead and select one of hers to play face down. And then we're going to go ahead and flip our cards over. We'll check to see if there's any counters. And so she's playing a blue, which happens to counter green. If that happens, I'm going to lose this card. It's going to, I believe, go back into my hand. And she's going to gain one energy. And she's also going to be doing the damage on this card and potentially any bonus effects. So in this case, we both have 10 life to start the game with, and she's going to do four damage to me. Now this is vulnerable. If this ability is countered, 
oh wow, exhaust it, meaning go ahead and discard it. And if you hit somebody, deal two damage to yourself. So she's actually going to take two damage just by doing this card. But I go to six and she's going to go to eight. This card will be discarded. She can go ahead and put this in her discard pile. And because she countered me, she's got one energy, which is good. It's what she needs one more. And she's going to be able to get this, basically this ultimate card. All right, we're going to go again. And we just simply re rinse and repeat the process. All right, now it's on. Here we go. And we flip. We check counters. This is going to counter a rest. If I play a rest, this is an execute. Execute means that the player will instantly die. So in this case, if I played Bask, she executes me, I instantly lose, and she wins the game. And we'll either move on, or that's just the end of it. And then mine is going to counter green, which in case she did not play. So both of these actions will take effect. She will do one damage to me, putting me at five. I will do two damage to her, putting her at six. And then we'll check to see if we get any of their benefit abilities. I got a boost, so I did not get my boost yet because I haven't awakened my character yet. And then she says, if your enemy played a fist, this gets plus one attack which is not the case. Both of us will then discard these cards and we'll keep playing the game. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is resting. Resting is going to give you a benefit, which is letting you take all the cards from your discard pile. So if you run out of cards, basically when you play this, you can get these cards back into your hand and they might provide some other benefit as well. However, it's dangerous to play rest because there's executes available. If she executes my rest, I just instantly lose. So you have to be careful when you choose to rest. However, there are other ways to get cards back. For instance, usually these shields here will let you get certain types of cards back from your discard pile. So if I had, for instance, these three cards, and I played this, I would be able to get this fist back and I'd be able to get this green card, but not the red card. And then this card will simply just go. And how you play cards will determine how well you do in this game. It's a pretty straightforward type of game with like the rock, paper, scissors mechanics. But with a lot of unique twists, a lot of unique character abilities. And of course, if you play the tournament mode, if I were to get executed by her, I would lose this character. She would keep this one and reset it. And I would choose a whole new character with the ability to swap one card from their deck and of uh, the same type. So for instance, if she had, uh, I don't know, this card here, I could, I could swap out my original rest with this card here and put this into her deck. And so at the third round of the game, it's possible if you have two unique cards in a deck uh, that would normally not have those cards, making the replayability quite a lot more in a game like this. So let's come up and talk about it. Pocket Paragons, at its core, is a very simple game. You're simply playing cards face down from the, the hand that you start with, flipping them up, checking to see if counters or executes take place, and then determining how much energy you gain or if just both cards go off, to the point where somebody hits zero health, in which case they'll choose a new character, swapping cards if they want, and playing the game once more. What brings in the complexity of this game is not only just, if you're playing tournament mode, the fact that you can change up your deck, but the type of cards you choose to play, how they're going to counter, what is in your opponent's hand, and if you can remember what they played previously to determine how you want to play your cards. Each character feels very different comparatively to another character, and basically you want to utilize them as they are meant to be utilized. So for instance, when I was playing my specific character, one of my, my personal favorites so far is this one over here, Mr. F the Awakened. This is actually a very interesting character because as he gathers energy, he's going to be able to use boost effects and boost effects are only triggered when he has enough energy or if he plays his rest and boosts can give him more health gain they can give him more damage but of course it's kind of a slow grind up as he manages to get his energy if you want do you want to push that energy on turn one you could do that but you could also lose on turn one if you do so there's kind of this risk and reward factor to playing rest or determining what your opponent has in the last two cards of their hand and if you can counter that card then you can get your energy as well that way whereas other characters are going to get benefits if they just simply hit you or if they defend against you there is of these six here every character that functions in some unique way and characters that work well together when you add new cards into their decks, determining what team you have. I like also the fact that they're going to have unique sets of cards here, which are going to have their own unique art that all play together. It does remind me of a lot of card systems, but this one with the ability to make it fairly simple in an idea, you can play with pretty much any younger kid. And as they progress in age or just maybe an experience, they're going to be able to start understanding the game 
anything more, how to counter their opponent, determine when they're bluffing, determine when they're not, and be able to become a champion at this game. I really, really enjoyed Pocket Paragons. I like the idea of a game that I can just whip out and play in five to 10 minutes, and the ability to make it even longer if I want. And I can also then choose what types of the different characters I want, who I want to play with, what I want to play with, and how I want to customize my decks without having to sit there and spend a couple hours doing so like I would in something like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon. Not that I don't love those games as well. Those, in fact, are games I've played for since my childhood. But this one here is just something where I can go bing, 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 and I'm ready to go I'll play the game and I feel like I've customized. I feel like I have my own unique strategy and then I can put it back up and I'm good to go. Great artwork, great quality. You're going to get everything you would expect to get in a game like this with their ability to, you know, mix and match different characters. And there's also another IP, which I'll put up here, that basically is from a Nintendo Switch game, I believe, and also a Steam game where you're like, it's like a similar to Smash Brothers. I haven't played it yet, but I would really like to play it because it looks really cool. But they're adding IPs into this game. So I'm excited to see what else they release into this game as they continue the line, if they continue the lineup. Overall, though, what do you think about the game? Is it something interesting for you? It is just a two player game, so it does leave out a lot of people who might want to play with multiple players. It would be kind of cool to see if they could introduce a larger array of players into some type of combat system. I always do enjoy playing with more players, although this does work for a very good two player bluffing and countering style rock, paper, scissors game with quite a few complexities. All right, let me know down below. Let, let's, let's get the outro on. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button so you can see more of our videos. We do live streams just like this game here. We play every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. In fact, we will be playing this one, so you can go ahead and check it out, as well as our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Here's a giveaway that we're doing, link in the description as well. And of course, don't forget to go ahead and head over to all of our blogs as well. We've got a ton of new blogs up on the site that I definitely think you guys will be interested in taking a look at. Let me know down in the comments what you like about this game, what you don't like about this game, what you're excited to see in the game, maybe some different IPs that would work well for it, and if it's your type of game. I am very curious to see the type of audience that's going to be really interested in the Pocket Paragons lineup. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, we look forward to battling it out with you in a 10-minute game. Yeah, get him, get him. Next time. You're so good at this. He's such a good, good dog.